Hello everyone, welcome back to Sorky Formstead. So my name is Samantha and I'm gonna take you down a little road of espionage, basically whistleblowing and people's lives being threatened all over the topic of geoengineering. Y'all gonna have to hold on one second though. Stay a uh, hammer, let's go. Good, good boy, come. My German Shepherd spotted something in the woods. You know, have to recall when that happens. You never know what's out there. Anyway, guys, I wanted to introduce you to Kristen Megan. Some of you may have heard of her. Some of you may have not. But listen to this quick clip. I conducted soil sampling because I thought, you know, if, if this is real and they are spraying this, it's going to get to the ground. So I conducted air sampling. I conducted soil sampling. And I was getting high levels of these contaminants. When I started asking the question again under a new commander, I never in my life thought I would have somebody look me in the face and tell me, I am questioning you. Is there something wrong with you? You've been looking really depressed lately. You know I can put you under mental evaluation for up to 120 days. Who would take care of your daughter? Because I was divorced at the time. As soon as I heard that, I knew. It validated everything I ever thought and now, the reason we're going to bust into this topic is, well, one, because I'm an organic farmer, And a lot of you have asked me recently, Sam, how do we grow organic food if we know they're dumping these toxic chemicals on our food? The second reason we're talking about this, folks, why do you think these wildfires are so bad recently? Because the chemicals in the soil the chemicals in the water, the chemicals being absorbed and moving up and down the trees that are burning are flammable toxins, okay? So a lot of people are still not believing that this is real. And by the way, you're coming with me while I feed my animals while this video plays because I can't just sit still 12 hours a day putting out videos, folks. I have to run now so you know i did email her and asked her if i could interview her also could have put her in my book because the book is almost finished folks it's fixing me ready to be published you're going to want to read the book that leslie and i wrote it is amazing so let's get this video rolling while i'm feeding so ignore what i'm doing listen to her something a little less hazardous while also maintaining the integrity for a technical order meaning for that process it says you must use you know, xylene or toluene to do this process. <coughs> well, I have to kind of fast forward. I want to say around 2006, I started kind of opening my eyes to how the military wasn't really what I thought it was. And people approached me knowing what I did for a living and said, have you ever heard of chemtrails? Well, I hadn't. And that sparked my interest. So I went online and I looked at chemtrails. I saw a lot of, you know, debunking, a lot of sites that were just kind of calling it a conspiracy theory. And I thought, well, geez, this is what I do for a living. Preventive health, making sure that people are not getting sick, especially in the workplace, and by things that we're doing that can affect, you know, human health and the environment. To summarize it, in an attempt to debunk this conspiracy theory as I thought it was, I didn't debunk it. It literally changed my life. Um, like I said, this is hard for me because it's not easy standing here It's part of my story. One day I was going through that computer system, which if you want to look it up, it's called an Air Force Form 3952. It is the approval of hazardous materials. I was finding tons and tons of large quantities of aluminum, barium, strontium, and the forms of oxides and sulfates. And of course I knew that there's industrial processes you may not have heard of, but it's bead blasting, pneumatic sanding, shot peening. There are certain medias that's similar to that that is used. However, I had already accounted for that. I would sit and look at this computer system and say, this shop wants to order this paint. I'm going to tie it to a task. We had to know what was being used, why it was being used, track me a cradle to grave on how we were going to dispose of it to be compliant with OSHA and the EPA. One of the legal requirements in approving these is looking at what used to be called the material safety data sheet. On that sheet, it's going to list the manufacturer. It's going to list 
some maybe acquired personal protective equipment that needs to be used or some ways to mitigate the exposures. These electronic MSDSs did not have a manufacturer name. They were very vague. They almost looked to me like somebody had made it and scanned it into the system. So I asked the question, what is this being used for? I never got an answer, so I didn't approve it. And it sat there. And then the heat came down. Why aren't you, are you behind on your 3952s? Only a select few of us did that. So I started asking questions. And at that point, my demonization began. Things at Robbins Air Force Base. I was now doing some more investigation work. Part of what I did was to use a high volume air sampler to air sample um, up to, I'd say, a football field in about 10 minutes. I also conducted soil sampling because I thought, you know, if, if this is real and they are spraying this, it's going to get to the ground. So I conducted air sampling, I conducted soil sampling, and I was getting high levels of these contaminants. When I started asking the question again under a new commander, I never in my life thought I would have somebody look me in the face and tell me, I am questioning you. Is there something wrong with you? You've been looking really depressed lately. You know I can put you under a mental evaluation for up to 120 days. Who would take care of your daughter? Because I was divorced at the time. As soon as I heard that, I knew. It validated everything I ever thought. And I thought, I've spent nine years of my life trying to protect human health, and here we are, violating law after law after law. Just sitting here, instead of protecting the people, we are poisoning the people. And I never got up so much courage from that fear of being thrown in a cage, because when you're in the military, folks, you're a number. Hey, friends and family, please take a second right now, hit the thumbs up, drop a comment, share this video on all your social media platforms, folks. That's going to push it in the algorithm. That's what you can do for free. Now, if you'd like to support the fire victims that were caught in Maui, August 8th of 2023, and what happened to those folks, here's our cash app. If you'll look right here in comments, you know where comments is, look at the top comment, it's called pinned. That's for me. It's all the different ways that you can donate to the fire victims. We leave in like five days. Please row in our boat. Very veteran, right? Yes, I was in the US Air Force for nine years. Wow. And you came out and blew the whistle on geoengineering, things that you witnessed were going on. Can you give us the real nutshell? Absolutely. Basically, I had heard of what many people know as the term chemtrails. Um, and I worked in a job called bioenvironmental engineering. And I figured, I thought that was insane. And why would we do something like that? Modify the weather by using hazardous materials in our atmosphere. So, and actually the process of trying to debunk it or disprove it I realized it was actually coming right out of my office as I was one of the people that was approving the chemicals. And um, it really shook the core of my oath. And I did a lot of sampling, a lot of investigation, and I blew the whistle and I got out. And I've now used my credentials, my oath, and my powers for good to help people understand it's very real. It's now openly admitted. There are multiple forms of weather modification. I specifically found the one of stratospheric aerosol injection. and. Um, collectively around the globe, we have to understand that it is now being admitted because they're saying it's combating climate change. While the climate change we need to be worried about is man-made climate engineering, also known as geoengineering. And when you say you had chemicals being pumped into the air, what kind of chemicals are they putting out that rain down on humanity, basically? Nanoparticulate metals, like we had different sulfates and barium and stromium. Uh, I, I know it's probably changed over time. I know they use silver iodide for certain things, but these are the, the odd part of it was the quantities that I saw them coming in, the form that they were coming in, and it's the same type of materials that I was trying to engineer out of the workplace to substitute with safer materials. And when you notice that the what's called the safety data sheet, the information about a chemical of what personal protective equipment to wear, how do you dispose of it, how do you pack it to ship it, when key information is missing, I ask questions. And my questions led to demonization, and I knew I found something I shouldn't have. That's insane. So these metals are basically toxic for the humans, I would presume? or Yes, because it also has aluminum. And a lot of people will tell you, well, these things aren't horrible in small quantities. 
it's not small quantities because when you are putting things above us, the dissipation rates are dependent on weather and climate, but it's getting into the food, it's getting into the soil. And around the world, wastewater treatment plants, when it comes to pharmaceuticals or these toxicants is what they're called, they are not able to filter them out. So if you're growing organic food, you know, it's, are we gonna go back to the plexiglass barriers on our plants? I mean, it's horrible. That's why you can ban it anywhere. We've had states, uh, states in the United States ban it, and that is great to get the ball rolling but people really need to wake up to it, irrespective of any political party, it's not okay. And you're seeing a huge increase in neurodegenerative issues like Alzheimer's. Uh, it's really difficult for people with respiratory issues and asthma, and people are wondering why they have allergies 24-7, 365. And I like what you said about that climate change or the, the change we ha experience in weather. Often we can't dis... Uh, connect that from these geoengineering activities. Do you want to say something more about that? I mean, how do we feel that? Is that is there proof or so that that is definitely coming from that? Yes. Uh, there so why did I bother videoing this while I'm obviously out here sweating? Folks, this is real. This is real. Those particles that she's talking about that are not only toxic to you, asthma, you hear her even discuss the neurological damage. I have brought this up before and had pushback, but I'm gonna stand on 10 years of college, and two degrees when I say this. Autism has been linked. Now they have buried it. There's nothing I can do about it. It has been linked to the toxins going in the ground and on the food, okay? I have videos on my channel from over a year ago, Everything Organic is the name of the playlist. Talking about how many pesticides, fungicides, herbicides they have found in the amniotic fluid of pregnant women. Now I know people are gonna say, well, I have one autistic child, but the other two aren't. So that's not true. Yes, it is, okay? Your children are not identical, folks. Some of them are gonna be predisposed or you may have been exposed to a higher level, a specific combination of chemicals, okay? Through the food you're eating, the water you're drinking and the air that you're breathing. It is not your fault. I am not blaming you. It is obviously coming from the US Air Force and the United States government. But this is important. This video needs to be shared. This is gonna be tied into the book that I've written for you guys. And when we get back from Maui, we're gonna deep dive that book. But if you wanna know why the wildfires seem a little different, burning a whole lot hotter, melting rims that can't melt until the temperatures are above 4,000 degrees, this is why. This is why. They are poisoning us. The temperature this year in Louisiana, I, I keep seeing these headlines, hottest, Hottest records ever. I don't know where you're living, folks, but it has been like I've been on vacay in South Louisiana this year. Yeah, I'm sweating and yeah, I'm hot, but you know what? This is South Louisiana. It feels like you're living in a sauna nine months out of the year. It hit 117 degrees without the heat index last year. It's only 90 right now. I'm telling God, I feel like I'm in the Bahamas. It feels amazing. Like you gotta put some perspective to this global warming crap. What's happening is a man-made climate geoengineering. Now, I'm gonna stand on that. Yeah, I am because the more I do for this book, the more research I do, the more I realize this is like some kind of Rockefeller novel somebody wrote. How do we take these idiots money? Come on now you've watched me for any amount of time, you know I will not be bullied and I'm sure not gonna be shut up. I'm gonna tell you when I'm wrong, I'm gonna tell you when I'm right. Folks, Sam's right. God bless y'all, I love y'all. If you have not yet decided whether or not you're gonna donate to the fire victims of Maui, now be a good time. Here's the cash app, I like a dollar. Love you guys, have a blessed night.